screen. Oh, thank you. I just you have, don't to, have do, to do nothing. You got to do the gotcha. <laughs> you do one thing. Or Oops, what are you touching? Gotcha. It, <laughs> <laughs> it says got it. <laughs> oh, okay. It, Zoom says you must do that or it won't record for you. So um, it is now May 9th. By, well, after 5.30, and we can start our regular meeting. Um, public comment. I can go in the beginning or the end. You can go now if you'd like. Yes. Okay. Can I sit here or I can't? No, you need to sit there. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Um, Better if I stand or it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. It's up to you. Um, well, I'll stand up. It's definitely more formal. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Ellen Adler, for those of you who may not know. Uh, Hi, Ellen. Good. Um, Ellen, you're I off heard. camera. <laughs> Is that better? That's better, yes. Okay, so I'm limited to five minutes. It's been for my public radio, so I can do a lot five minutes. <laughs> so um, why I came to the meeting is I would like to see the space upstairs used as an art gallery. And I would like to put together shows. I have a very in-depth and consequential background in marketing art and presenting art and curating art. Um, I had an advertising agency in New York City for the most prominent art dealers in the world, Paul Rosenberg and Company. They brought the cost and went to existence. Um, both galleries in Boston created the Hudson River School of Painting. They are the oldest art gallery in the United States. These people were all my clients, the people who formed the uh, American Wing, the Sachs. Donald Sack was my client. And I curate mm -hmm. and I continue to curate. Mm -hmm. I'm also working with the previous head of PBS, Bill Baker. He gave his island. I'm making artist residencies up in Canada. So credential wise. And, and I love working with people and I have tons of ideas. So from what I understand, this institution started life as a gallery of sorts. When I first moved to Troy, I had a lot of things on the plate, but I met with someone who worked for Philip Morris and I said, there is not, a city's not a city without a museum, but how do you segue to that? I can do fundraising, I can do a lot of things, but this would be a perfect vehicle to open that door. And I have a million ideas that I would have to bat around with you. Were you interested in this? I'm very, very responsible. I follow through on my word. You can check me out. <laughs> um, that's who I am. So I, that's what I want to do. Um, is there a place for feedback? You want to ask me any questions? Um, well, how about one thing? Do you have a proposal? Have you written anything up that we could review, look at? I could do that easily, but it wouldn't be much more than the five sentences I'm going to give you here. And I'm not doing it as a comp out. I'm doing it because I don't, if you want it, I'll be happy to do that. But it's so broad at this point in time. You have the art gallery. I remember when, um, what's her name, was here first, the girl that lived in. Uh, Albany, who was doing all the programming. Kim. Stephanie, right? Okay. So I was like, I went up into that space and then I was able to take a look at some of the books there, some of the rare books, which are quite amazing. Um, so that space is beautiful. And I don't think it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be vital. And this is a very vital institution. And I believe I can make it more vital. I think I could make it something it isn't now. And there is no other space to really appropriate in quite the same way. You have the traffic, you have the close to the downtown, et cetera. So if you would like me to write that, the very same thing I said, like I could fill it out. But I can't really fill it out unless I know there's some sort of real interest here. And I'd be happy to do that. 
No problem. Okay. Well, thank you for that very, very much. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. So, uh, ask the question, Marie. Yes. Uh, what type of work are you proposing? Are you proposing using the original art gallery or all of the upstairs? Uh, Oh, more? I think you, you, you can't bite off more than you can chew. So I believe in doing things well. I would use the original space that we use for the meetings sometimes upstairs. That is designated, I think, as an art gallery, or it was. It yes. has nice, tall ceilings, beautiful proportions. I wouldn't fill too much because I think it's, I don't believe you hit the ground running, you hit the ground putting things together properly, and then you grow from there. That's my feeling. Christian, I believe you have a question. You may ask it, too. Thank you. You are. Uh, quick, it sounds, speaking personally, it's not speaking for the board, it sounds interesting. Uh, I look forward to seeing your proposal, and I'm hoping that you would share that with, I assume, through the director. Through the director. And that you would include. Oh, me. I, and I just that, want and that you would include your contact information. Oh, yeah. I've known Evelyn for years. This is a catalog that I put out. I couldn't afford the, the ticket to the winter antique show because this cost me in 1986 $12,000 for 1,000 copies, but instantaneously all 57th Street wanted to be my client. I really couldn't do any more than I was doing. But um, I worked before this. I was working at Art News Magazine, former art editor of the New York Times, Mel Nestero. And I was pretty unstoppable. The first day I did for both galleries, pretty much every CEO across America wanted me. <laughs> they they are a very they brought Corot to America. Uh, I started a whole series of these went into textbooks, University of Indiana School of Journalism. Um, I educated people. You know, I, I really crossed a line between advertising and um, that was Henry Holt. Now, this is the most prominent art gallery that ever existed. If you know the story of the Monument Men, that was my client, Mr. Rosenberg. Thank you. Okay, good enough. Thank you so much. And and would the proposal include the co what the costs cost. might be involved for the library? That I would have to come up with at the time, I'm sure I could probably find find funding. I have one exhibit I'm thinking of that I thought would be very wonderful to start with. If you want me to write about that, I can write about that. Yes. I'm, I just have a, a I'm just very curious. Uh, I would think that at least there would be a cost for insurance, right? It, there would have to be insurance. Well, it depends how you do it. Honestly, I mean, you have insurance on the building. So you have patrons that are coming here. I would, maybe I'm wrong, but I can't imagine that people coming here wouldn't be covered. Okay, I could. But what about the artwork? The artwork is not always insured. Uh, and I think we can get more information when the proposal comes in. I think there's some very specific pieces that you're asking about. And yes. certainly something we have to explore yes. further, but. Yes, I'm sorry I, to jump you. in, but yeah, I, no, no, I, I'm glad you did. I could come up with the artwork that nobody would have to insure. Okay. Honestly, there's so many ways to spin it. Mm -hmm. I gave an exhibit, I had an exhibit up in Canada um, on tiny houses. It was incredibly well celebrated. There was, okay, we finished. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you for the information. Um, so, so the please, bottom line is present something with a little more yes, please and then pieces share it with our director and then we'll it. take it from there yeah. you got it okay thank you very thank much thank you or, or Ellen. you're very close um any other public comment i don't think i'm supposed to stay or thursday you may you may but you don't have to you don't have to yeah Okay. All right. Hearing none. Um, Treasurer's report. Uh, in the, I, in the um, finance package for this month, there was a list of routine bills. We had, well, I had met with Paul. We had pared it down um, considerably. And I don't know if you want to take a look at it, but we met in the finance committee meeting 
and we are presenting to this to the board to for approval that in case of an emergency, um, that these bills would be paid without a board meeting. Do we need an emergency, or would they just automatically be paid on a routine basis? Was my intention to perhaps in lieu of a timely meeting? That's that's the way I was thinking. Okay, not that. <clears throat> so they wouldn't be, if we had. If they came in and we still had a meeting, board meeting, they we would have, have, and they're going to be on the list anyways. They're, they're, they they would always right. be on the list. I, I know they're always going to be on the list, but I, I just wonder if that puts Joy. Does that put you? Um, does it make it more difficult for you? If you don't know if there's going to be a meeting, a timely meeting, or just automatically pay it. I'm um, that's all right. I'm trying to understand the question. Can you repeat? So I think the question is that are we are we approving these routine bills to be paid no matter what, or are we only going to do it in case of an emergency? And that was it going to cause you an issue if we don't, if we say it's an emergency only situation? Is that going to cause you confusion? Well, no. I don't know if you have to say emergency. I just think if you're not going to meet right. and these particular bills are due. Like say, and, for some reason, we decide not to have a December. That's where I say in lieu of, you know, a meeting, <clears throat> you could pay these automatically. Right. Um, it's not more a particular interest in paying them any other, uh, you know, right. other than at the board meeting. It'll be, I can work with it any way you would like. Okay. It was my intention yep. to have them paid routinely. And then review that the next board meeting. Okay. Doesn't matter. I mean, there does seem to be a difference of opinion as right. to what as to what the. the I'm, uh, a, I, I'm okay with. I just feel like they're going to be in. I guess my thought was the only reason we were coming up with this is because in case we were not meeting, there would be some bills that we could pay. So. They're always going to, you know, if we're meeting, then they're always going to be on the list, mm -hmm. anyways. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether. And, and to me, it is, I just wanted to know what we were actually approving. Mm -hmm. And that was something I don't remember. The point is, that could have been just over in my head. And I wanted to make sure you know, what works with Joy. So um, do we not care? Do we want to make this a routine? Or if we're not having a timely meeting? I prefer to do it routinely. I'm fine with routine. That's fine. Either way. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So with that, so these are, so, so we'll read. Sorry, the motion that these bill, the, the list of vendors on the routine bills list will be paid routinely every month without prior board approval. They will be approved at the next meeting. Oh, Post approved. Yes. I just want to make sure I'm getting a piece of email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Board approved the automatic approval of identified routine bills. Automatic payment of routine bills. Payment. I like that. The yes. automatic payment. The identified routine bills. Yes, I identified. Okay. Right. Identified routine bills. The board approved the automatic payment of identified routine bills henceforth. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, fancy. Here. You're very good. But then we need something that says um, subject to. Well, then, well, are they subject to approval? Subject to review at the next board meeting. Exactly. Okay. So, so they will remain subject. Yeah, well good. said. So just a quick yes. question for me. Yes. I just yes. I can just keep them all on that list, right? Yes. Um, now we'll yeah. have to make sure this is the list that we all agree on to, right? Yes. Okay. okay. And I can just no changes on my side. I could just continue. These are the only ones I can pay. Um, and you don't have to approve it, but I will still include them in everything. I just want to reassure everybody exactly. that you'll see. Exactly. All the cost, all the spending. Okay. Yes. And, and they'll still require the signature of the of the treasurer. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. And and one other person. 
that's two people. Well, these to... are online bills. I... They normally, some yeah, some of them are online, so. Okay, Sherry, you had a question? Uh, and yeah, I'm just realizing I, I have a lot of holes in <laughs> where I was. Uh, but anyway, uh, it says TIAA CREF for retirement. And what about the state? That's not here quite yet. Julian will have to have another meeting. I just, again, I missed chunks of time here. Here again on the agenda. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Make a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those not in favor? Marie's, Marie? Marie's not in the state. Okay. Are you still saying nay, Marie? Yes. Yes. Is that it? You, you are still saying nay? It's okay. a nay. That's correct. I am still saying nay. Okay. Okay. It's all right. And then uh, the next is the list of bills for the month. And the proposal that we approve the payment of the bills in the amount of $47,629.30. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone not in favor? Abstain? That's it. Oh, and in case, well, for those who were not here, because we did talk about this at the last time, we did reinvest the money in the treasury bills. Um, we went with just a single amount rather than ladder them. Um, it's a four month coming due in the end of August. That's just sort of that point. That is the plan to ladder. We did not ladder. ladder. Yeah. And so it was the idea like to reassess in August. Right. That ladder? Yes. And, and why weren't, didn't we ladder? Yeah. It was more of a poll decision. So the range were So better. hadn't we decided previously that we would ladder? I'm, I'm we just, did with Paul, we we yeah. we the the way it was worded was with Paul's approval, mm -hmm. and he he felt more comfortable going with the highest rate for the four months. So the yield is five point one one. It is, and it and it matures on eight twenty nine. That's back back in the day. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm dating myself slightly. This is what we're left. And it is. And the age of what? 13%. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> like no, none of the whole no, thing, no. but I do have one of um, I'll scroll down there, like right after all the fight. Just uh, allow me to scroll down. Sure. Follow along. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And you can check your email too. I, 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 I saw your email. And apologies, my memory is not as good as yours. Still scrolling. <laughs> Yeah, it takes. I think I'm here. Just one more. Yeah. That's the board. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Um, yes. yes. I'm here. Okay. Um, so I had commented that the item under potential upcoming grant opportunities of reconstruction or courtyard, et cetera, um, that some of that implies a project that has not yet been decided by the board and adding it to the potential list gives it more credence than appropriate. I probably didn't say it as nicely. But um, it's, just, it. it's just a list. Right? It, what? It's just a list. It doesn't mean it's an approved list. It's just a list of potential projects. No, but I wanted to make the comment and thought for now to mitigate any uh, confusion in the future that that comment be recorded. Um, and then under long-term physical facilities, master planning goals, yeah. uh, no updates were brought forward. And I just wanted to, again, I said restate my previous comments that six months timetable is insufficient and a longer period had been broached. Had been broached. Okay. I agree. All right. Um, the only thing I will add to your comments, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, we'll revisit the long-term physical planning piece okay. at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, hope to clarify that piece there. I apologize okay. for the right. in clarity of, in that piece there. That's my fault. Uh, regarding the emergency egress stair, uh, I think you could ask uh, any fire official. They'll tell you that uh, we are at very high risk of not being able to occupy the buildings we currently do, given the uh, condition of our egress stairs that are currently in place. So I, I strongly would advocate for that piece to be included on the list of potential projects that we should consider. Okay. We can certainly without, talk about. Without consideration of long-term planning. I'm, I'm confused. I thought the, what Evelyn had been objecting to was the inclusion of the courtyard project. Is that not the case? Did I misunderstand? And it was actually the, the stairs? No. No, you you are correct actually in what you thought. I was not talking about the stairs, although that does very closely, but that seemed to be an addition. So I'm sorry. I had saying. not I had not commented at the meeting about it, so I can't add it to the um, notes, the minutes, because I didn't say anything about it. All right. But my question is: yeah. Are any of these this any of these things on this list been approved by the board? I mean, none of we've them we've yeah. talked about it all. I mean, we've we've said, but I don't. I mean, I don't see why that one stands out because I don't. Well, I'm sure the emergency request was just brought up at the last meeting. That was the first time it's ever been on the list. We didn't approve that yeah, one either. Is. But but I didn't make a comment on it. Maybe we'll yeah. how about I'm going to do that at the end of the month. Okay. <laughs> all right. And also, I well, first of all, usually the building committee uh, ideas precede the board anyway, and don't go through board approval before um, being discussed in the building committee. It's sort of the reverse of what actually occurs. But we did approve the courtyard project in the sense that we approved the uh, HSR that was done, which included that project. We, we accepted the HSR. And so we'll, we'll come forward with the long-term physical plan master planning these were yes. suggestions we didn't say yet we're going forward that, that's, Alan, yes. you, have, you sounded like you had read from something the specific language of your objections i send an email out but i have that and if you need it i'll can send it again hi or i can hand this to you too you want to mm -hmm. last week? and i also agree with carolyn that it has marked Credence than many of the other projects that were on the list uh, that hadn't been discussed before. Like, for instance, the repair of the uh, Tiffany window. 
Oh, we've talked about that lots of times of the 10 grand and uh, additional money and whether or not that was going to be a good construction project or not. No, that was the lay lights we talked about in relation to that money. And we've not talked about the Tiffany too, whether or not it can fall under the 10. At which Paul says no. I mean, we, we've talked about it here and it isn't a major move on um, projections. To me, there's a difference. And I just wanted the notes to reflect the comments I made. Sure. That's all I wanted to do, Marie, was um, reflect the comments made at that meeting. Because I know at some point, it, it's going to come back to what if I don't. And a future, so, book, future board will do what they want to do. Exactly. Without regard to any comments made at the meeting. Exactly. <laughs> but I always figure it's better to just yeah, fine. have it yeah. done. All right. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we would not look at the building committee report for approval. So I will make a motion. Do you want to make the motion? Or do you want me to do it? I'll make the motion to have the building committee report with those comments um, approved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Marie? Yes. I, yay, uh, abstain. I had my hand up and I can't I, see it. <laughs> and, in the background. <laughs> and I also said yay. Yay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, now we go to regular. The 2024 operating budget. I know you've got a lot to say. I think it might be better to move that down a way okay. towards the director report. We shall do. Because it also involves some other issues that will be in the director's report. Okay, shall do. Um, <laughs> so next long range plan. I had did send out the revised, revised draft of the uh, long range plan last week. I did not get any other responses back. Um, chance now for anyone who does. And I know, Marie, you made the comment last month about the being able to monitor it. Um, has does anybody else have any other changes in, or specific constructive changes that I can add to the wording? So oh, I, I did have a question. You also sent out sure. Kirsten's comments. Yeah, the, the piece I sent out had Kirsten's um, comments layered on it. Okay, so I, I just, that seemed to be the case, but I wasn't sure yes. whether they had been integrated. I, that's why I tried to say the last time I sent it out. <laughs> but since you sent out the, his comments as well, I wasn't sure. Uh, Yes, I so for instance, I felt that um, monitoring the, the community uh, needs or input regarding what the library was doing and it should have a time frame involved uh, rather than just saying that that should be done. So under A, you're saying instead of say conduct periodic community, you want that 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 periodic to have an actual value to it. Like right. Yeah. Or yearly or annual or right. Yeah. Because so so one could tell whether that intent was actually being fulfilled. I don't know that. Okay. Anyone have any I have no does anyone have any objections or thought about that? I have Every no two years. What? Every two years. And just to remind me my annual page. I didn't First page, A. Very biannual, actually. Yeah, biannual. Periodic. Okay, so biannual. All right. Is that biannual? Biannual. Is that, is twitch every two years good for you, yeah. Murray? Um, yeah, I was thinking every year or, or two years. Now, Paul, this seems to be a rather um, expansive undertaking. Are you okay with it? Which is? The, um, the long-term plan that's presented. It seemed primarily that it would fall upon you and the staff. 
Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, might as well add on more stuff. <laughs> um, this is very close to the Can't think of an, yeah. <laughs> any reason why not. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I had one comment. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't think it is. What? It, it's worth wondering if it was in the. Uh, I thought it was, but you know, I have hard copy to. Uh, I made it with a copy. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Tell me if I'm wrong or right. I can't. Oh, oh wait. That's it. Never mind. Oh. That's the. Uh, uh, administration of six eight. A one, okay. Yeah. Make it biennial. Biennial review. Biennial. <laughs> because biannual is twice a year, and we're not doing that. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even reaching correctly. Okay, twice. Thank you. A year. But we want to do it once every two years. <clears throat> right. So the next one would be next year, right? Yes. And the other is just annual. Is it on here somewhere or no? Is what? Is it on here somewhere? Or on the computer? I did not. No. Oh, okay. And, oh. Is there another copy? No. Okay. It's all right. Sorry. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> one thing that, you know, Paul and I had to talk about the different definitions. Um, so in number <laughs> outreach resources page this is the one two, the fourth page the addition of saying um, ensure that the library has adequate public funding for its operation and capital improvements it's in the Dropbox too by the way yeah under KL it's so low range plans KL version. Um, sorry. No, it's okay. Sorry. I should have pulled it up. No, it's not. It's, it's really not. Um, I'm find the draft. And capital improvements and it in and, and B program grants for program support and capital improvements. Because it's how do I put this budget related to um Paul and I had a discussion that maybe we we can add capital improvements but keep it separate because capital improvements implies the larger projects which are not always budget driven that unless you want to change the word capital improvements to maintenance because you know the internal things that need to be done here versus putting on a new roof maintenance would come out of the operating budget capital improvements but not <laughs> Uh, which, which paragraph are you talking about? Page four, number eight. Four. Uh, under average resources, halfway down. There we go. Sorry, I messed this one What's the issue with this one? Um, capital improvements implies things like a new roof that's not budget driven that's separate budget driven is maintenance so this is meant to be an instrument for who this is meant to describe who does what who, who is this instrument for it is this for the board it's, it's for the board to kind of look as a, as a so guide so you can be more sarcastic and say we're, we're required to have, have okay one. It's for DLD. Is it particularly useful? Maybe, maybe not. But we got to add one. Yeah. So I was, I was trying to understand this is for the board or this is for Paul to do in his spare time. So <laughs> um, if this is for the board, then I think it has to absolutely remain. I think I would have great concerns if we said, oh, we're not going to do capital improvements. That we're only going to do maintenance. I I would have concerns. Well, I think that the question is public funding. Is that that public funding? Like if you're, I think you're saying is that the tax money 
Is that yeah, the capital? Well, I think you have to make a distinction between right. government grants that are included under the paragraph B. Right. I think that includes public funding. So I think there are various streams for public funding. I'm not saying this is part of our operation budget that we right. have regular. But I think that's what Paul's concern was that you're, that it's being included with the operational budget. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a distinction. I mean, you don't really, you don't have capital okay. improvements in your operating budget. Okay, so so then maybe it doesn't belong in paragraph eight. Mm -hmm. right? right, I think that's what I say. Perhaps it, we should include it under paragraph 3A. And let me go back to A. 3A, I think, also for that's an additional language in the language. Um, under environment? Yes, okay. environment three. All right. Include a safe, secure, comfortable environment for staff and patrons. Uh, provide and maintain facilities that are clean and good repair. Um, I think we should include a paragraph in that says long range capital facilities master planning as part of that, above and beyond just maintenance. Long range capital projects. Capital facilities. Facilities. Master planning. Yeah. Okay. Do anything we should be there? Okay. Do you want anything about ensuring that we have the money for it? Well, that, that I'm open to hearing the conversation about where it would be appropriate. If, if eight is not appropriate for right. that, then where is an appropriate spot for it? I think we should have someone that says, yes, we want to do fundraising or whatever to gather the funds necessary. How about under environments, right? Along but, with that, but maybe its own separate, right? That says that, that ensure that the library has adequate funding for right. capital improvements. Right. Something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Under mm -hmm. environment three, we'll do it. Either A or B. Okay. The improvement this or maybe it will be uh oh, think for future projects oh there's future projects so maybe it will be under place. like a c mm -hmm. so we have plan for future projects to support library mm -hmm. service goals okay. which is basically mm -hmm. a long-range capital facilities master plan right mm -hmm. that's this yes uh, and then sure funding and then funding with under that how does okay. that sound that sounds good. Christian? She sounds uh, reasonable, yes. Okay. And again, I, I wasn't trying to. The the list under B, under 3B, really? is uh, fairly specific. And it's, you know, identify our responses that could prove access, usage, and enjoyment yeah. of facilities. And then list one, two, three, four, five. Those are very specific Thanks. things. Thanks. Maybe. maybe I, I would. Okay. They are too specific. Don't you think they're more right? Again, they are, yeah. this was trying to take the old, the new forward, and so you would take out one through five. The whole thing? I would leave in B. I would leave in A under. Interesting. We've got. Wait, wait. Under. I'm, I'm going to show you. Okay. Uh, so we've got. Here. I'll tell you what. Oh, you can take this one, draw it on. I already drew in that one. So you keep yours. Draw it on your mind, please. And then I can uh, revise. Okay, I would recommend strike this. Maintain camera. Um, oh, here we go. Let's just take this here. And there. Slash. And then. Oh, yeah, I like it. And then D, adequate fundraising. Okay. And then we'll rebuild it. Thank you. All right. Any other thoughts, suggestions, reactions? In person or virtual? Okay. Um, I will revise the document, send it out again, and get some reactions. And Maybe we can put it on next month's agenda. Okay. All right. So we did this. Um, three, annual report. Uh, yes, the annual 
report. The annual report is finished and filed and accepted and everything else. Um, and some of the highlights are interesting too, as we emerge from the um, however many years pandemic was. Um, library visits uh, are up about 12 and a half percent. Um, registered. What's that? What is up? Library visits. Yeah, it's in the director's report. It's all written out. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> reading it off. Oh. <laughs> oh, I get yeah. um, Registered borrowers are up 4%. Overall circulation is up over 27%, which is encouraging. Again, we kind of measure the use of the library by circulation. I mean, it's one of the sacred statistics that we use. Um, both reference questions and interlibrary loans have increased. Um, you'll notice that electronic uh, holdings are down because um, they did a significant amount of weeding of the ebook collection, which is held in common with all 29 number libraries. So Upper Hudson did that reading? Yeah. Well, there's a committee. Okay. It's got librarians from other libraries and not me. <laughs> and children's programming is, attendance is up. Um, particularly, well, our story hour attendance is really up and somewhat impressive um, for us. Um, generally, programs are up, but they have made such a mess of adult programming in the annual report that it's hard to tell anything about it. But we did, according to our records, we did um, less actual adult programs. So that may have um, affected uh, the attendance figures. But again, it's they sort of made a mess of it last year and the year before, and now it's difficult to sort out. But we are getting a lot of people um, <clears throat> attracted to our programming in both children's, young adults, and adults. So, Am I reading this right, Paul, that last year they only had 35 YPS programs and we had 506 people attend it? On the annual report. On Should the annual report? Yeah. Oh, you're making me go because I'm of the annual report. I'm not sorry. Because sure. it looks like we, I mean, we had significantly less programs, but significantly more attendance in YPS. Well, that's probably true. I'm just wondering if there was a particular program that did so well or um, I didn't know, you know, I was just, just, it's more of a curiosity thing. Yeah, we had. <clears throat> quite long lists of programs with very, very few attendance in the past. You know, we do have larger attendance for whatever programs we put on. Right. And that's anecdotal evidence would suggest, you know, that we do have an increase in uh, participation all around. Right. Just I'm just saying like it's a little bit difficult in the at least in the adult part. Right. <laughs> that with the annual report figures, the way they messed them up. If I could just um, help explain some of that, maybe um, we didn't do any and we we hadn't done any in person programs really until like I think April or May, at least for young people. So you know we did a lot less programs because of that. Yeah, but we, we got have, more people. We have like five. We had five hundred six people attend thirty five programs. So there had to be a program that was like phenomenal. That was my only question. I was kind of more curious as to what. Oh, was well, we had, I know like a couple of the animal programs, we had at least 70 people. I think we had more than that. <clears throat> so we had a couple yeah, of those. Yeah, that, that's basically was my question, Carol, more than anything else. The day we had the politicians downstairs and the snakes upstairs. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
or was it the same? Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> I think, and for a while, there was a draw on what was it, the gaming? Gaming stuff? What is that, Wednesday nights or Thursday nights? Uh, meaning uh, Dungeon Dragons? Yeah. Dungeon Dragon, I think, I understand, is doing well. Yeah, I think you'll see. Uh, well. I mean, they're really going to be even better. Well, that's I think you'll see right? increases in that uh, next year, too. As a press, um, the adult summer reading program did so much better. Mm -hmm. The adult summer reading program did so much better. It was impressive. Yeah, yeah. Any other, any questions? Anything? Well, first, anything else you want to say about it? No, other than, um, you know, um, statistic wise, we're sort of climbing back to more normal okay. operations. No, we'll get there. Any uh, uh, questions, comments on this? Okay. Um, can I have? Can, is, it, is this inappropriate? <laughs> is there any way that we can actually see like circulation statistics rather than just annually? Could we talk about them like at the meeting or every more than just we once a year? We certainly could. Yeah. And and have it broken down between Lansingburg and. The last time I tried to do that, the board didn't. Have no interest but at all. It's on our long range so plan. If that you want me to cover that every month, ah, uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, I what mean, does anybody else feel like that would be? I think it'd be interesting. Yeah, I, a good and thing for us to be looking at. We'll look at it. We might not need to see it every month. It might be a horror we think. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I just feel like we should be looking at it more than annually. But I don't have a quarterly report. Then just show us <laughs> Just show us every month then. Let's how about monthly? And if we go, we don't need to do this. We can go right. quarterly, and that it may be better to do more often than than less than the other way around. <clears throat> okay. Um, next thing on the agenda: the annual election. To keep things moving and going forward, we're going to at least set a date for it. Um. The discussion usually centers around do we want to keep it in September? Do we want to keep it on a Tuesday? Um, Paul likes doing this the last Tuesday. We are very it's lucky. It's when it should be. That's when everybody knows that it is. The yeah, but if, it's young, if you move it around, you're trying to fool people yeah, but we, and you'll get criticism. You'll get criticism anyways because, <laughs> hey, I got in trouble for putting it on a yunt of. The year before, so we always get into trouble. Um, the last Tuesday of September, giving us the most time, which most people like, is uh, the 26th of September. Um, Yom Kippur ends Sunday, sundown on Monday. But we've discussed that if people are still traveling back from wherever they were for Yom Kippur, our um, absentee ballots are available. Thanks. <laughs> you don't want to ever make people feel they can't vote. Yeah. Um, so that was another question about absentee ballots. I have not heard any changes, you know, that they made them a little more liberal um, during the pandemic. Um, I haven't heard that there's been any changes since. But travel is covered. Okay. Just, um, yeah. I'm going to be away. It says, you know, you're going to be away. Well, oh, yeah, I you're going to be away. <laughs> you don't have to say exactly when you're going to be back. Yeah. Where are you been and watch? <laughs> Accepted reason to for Asbury absentee ballot. Yeah. I'm not going to be here. All right. Yeah. So, so travel and illness. Illness would also be another, right? Or disability. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. those are those yeah. are automatically covered for. Yeah. So, although we do have to be careful in this town about absentee ballots. I want to say that once. <laughs> um. Yeah. So the twenty sixth. Okay. Um. Our usual M O is our board meeting would be September. 12th 
to have our budget review um, at Maine on the 12th at 7 p.m. upstairs. I have not checked to make sure that they haven't already scheduled something. Um, and then on possibly that Thursday, just, just for fun, um, I should tell people that because there is a event for the end of the expedition, um, it is going to be held on September 13th, which is usually the Upper Hudson meeting. They are looking at a couple of dates to move the Upper Hudson meeting. One of them might be the 14th. I'm truly hoping it's not going to be that day. Because that's usually when we have, a, you know, the budget, et cetera, all the election stuff over at the Berg. So I'm hoping we can hold off at least on that, the Berg version, until I know better. Is that acceptable? Okay. So tell me what it is. Okay. On so on the 12th, if everyone's also agreed, what will we do after our B board meeting is segue upstairs for the community meeting about the election. Okay. You know, we get to cover. That's yeah. after the board meeting? That's okay. usually at 7. Okay. We usually do it at 7 p.m., do it upstairs mm -hmm. so the community can come out and ask questions. Usually we have League of Women Voters mm -hmm. um, play, not DJ, um, Master of Ceremonies, he asks the questions. Moderator. AMC. What? Moderator. Moderator. So that would be the 12th. And that's also meet the candidates? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's here. That's here. Mm -hmm. Right after we go just upstairs. Mm -hmm. Usually the in between. Um, but the 14th when we usually would do the... And the reason I do want to go to the Upper Hudson meeting, by the way, is because that's the date we would vote on our construction grant. And I would like to be able to, you know, be there and say hi. Especially for getting it. I will be I will not be here for the September meeting, I hate to say. Oh and, and I also I'll be here Oh, so maybe we need to start thinking about a which would roll back to September five, maybe? I won't be here from the first to the seventeenth. I'm sorry. You will not you will I will be in North Carolina from the first to seventeenth. 19 September. I anticipate I won't be here from the 7th until sometime normally. Don't be, you know, but I'm glad you told me now so I can like, all the staff so we can figure this out. Till when? Uh, I'm not exactly sure yet, but uh, okay. probably the 22nd. The 22nd? After okay. the 22nd. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so if we have to move at the 5th, might might make more sense simply because... We'll do be down one instead of... Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about quorum, too, so that's why I'm right. kind of good at the numbers. Right. Very much appreciate being forewarned. But so at least we could resolve that September 26th will be our election, election day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we can work around the rest <laughs> of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. And then yeah. now I have in my in my calendar that on June first we're should be advertising that we're looking for board members. So that that was a big thing that we talked about. Which yeah. seats are up this year? In what again? Right. Which seats are up this year? How many seats are open? There are two two seats open. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jerry's and Doug Brianna's. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at last year's uh, on my calendar. We did the the uh, presentations on the 13th and the 15th of September, and the library vote was on the 20th. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there was there was just if hmm? yes, um, because there's so, less time in between. So Maybe. there was just a that the. The presentations uh, occurred the week before the library vote. We probably had to move it up because of the holidays. It so could be. Or then I'd be back. What? Right? You'd be what? But I'd be back. 
Yeah, we did it the week before. Just the yeah. week before, and have our yeah. board meeting in that too. So I that would. That's right. That's a bad So that would be the 19th. Mm -hmm. Or the 20th and the 27th. Or the 20th, 20th. Okay. But I just want you, you know, I okay. just didn't want it to be a shot to. All right. So those are possibilities for today. I think I, it might have been last year that the holidays. I think it was. That's yes, what those Jewish saying. holidays, I can't remember. Cumbersome sometimes. And they all come up like together. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so at least we have this 26, no matter what is our election. Go from there. Director's report and all the other stuff. Yes, before I uh, cover the operating budget, okay. I can do a little more in the um director's report. Um <clears throat> I want to say that there has been a marked increase in incidents in the library in the past six months or more. Um, I used to get an incident report once a week. Now I get one every day. Um, these reports vary in severity, with some documenting a patron who is obviously drunk or is suspected of using drugs in the bathroom, to others in involving threats of violence to other patrons and staff, to physical attacks on patrons and staff. We discussed security issues at our most recent in-service day on January 27th this year, and are currently making follow-up uh, plans to uh, have additional in-service events. Uh, that will emphasize uh, security issues. Our staff um, has responded well to these incidents, um, making uh, efforts to defuse the situation, protecting patrons and guiding them away from the incident, calling for assistance from back from backup, and when necessary, calling the police. I am in the process of establishing a safety committee. Uh, the committee would be open to any and all interested staff members. Um, actually, we've probably got 20 people already. <laughs> I believe this would uh, give us a chance to discuss ideas and new approaches to the issue of safety in the library that allow us to implement changes quickly. This issue has impacted urban libraries to a greater extent than suburban or small town libraries. At a recent Directors Association meeting, uh, Andrea uh, Nicole, director of the Albany Public Library, placed workplace safety concerns and strategies on our agenda. Uh, most of the responses came from us and other urban libraries. Um, so it didn't seem to be a major issue in the suburbs or in, in small town libraries. Um, so I wanted to bring your attention to what we are currently going through. Um, There are ongoing questions, and nobody really at this point has a magic, magic solution, including <laughs> Albany. Um, although we're both working towards um, increasing the um, safety of our staff and other mm -hmm. patrons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, basically, that being said, I can review what I thought about in terms of the 2024 budget. Um, so that's also part of our agenda. Um, and this is early on. We don't really have all the answers yet on the budget because the further along we get, you know, the more we can see how we're doing this year. Uh, but some of the things that um, I would recommend is um, uh, 
increasing salaries, uh, staff salaries based on our annual salary schedule. Um, and that's about 3% um, per employee. So the cost of that would be about 28,000 um, added to the 2024 budget. Um, I recommend at this point um, also increasing the materials budget by 15% in the 2024 budget, and that would add about 14,000 um, to the materials budget. The utilities uh, budget has been somewhat problematic. As I said before, I can't quite, I thought National Grid was a regulated service, but apparently there's no regulation in New York State. Um, so based on the figures I'm seeing now, and this may change as well, it looks like we need to increase it again 35% for next year, which would add another 11550 to the gas and electric bill. Even though we seem to produce more gas natural gas than any other place in the world, but who knows why it's so expensive. Um, programs, as I discussed before, um, primarily are uh, supported by small grants and um, also the Friends. Um, but I think that uh, we probably should add a bit to the budget, um, and I'm suggesting 25% uh, to help us plan a little bit better. These changes would require an increase in the tax levy of about 3.62% for 2024. Now we get to the security question. Um, And it has been under discussion um, by the staff, obviously, who is on the front lines. Um, the um, library, as you know, the main library is open 60 hours a week. Um, the review of our incident reports would indicate that a security guard would be needed for the full time that the library is open. Um, we cannot really predict, you know, exactly when these kinds of things and incidents are going to happen uh, or when a security guard is actually needed. Um, so um, in order to do that, that would require hiring two uh, security guards um, full time at 35 hours a week. Um, the, our experience, we've had experience with security guards in the past and it has been pretty dismal actually. Um, we had, uh, basically rental cops, <laughs> um, rental security guards. Um, <clears throat> they are underpaid and not trained. Mm -hmm. um, what we are looking for is a much higher quality individuals to do this job. Uh, it involves uh, state certification um, as a security guard and lots of additional training on the job here. Um, so we would actually hire these security guards, and it is a, a civil service position. Um, so we would have to hire provisionally at this point. Did you currently have a list or? No, not no. They yeah. did give a test uh, two years ago, but only one person applied and he was not suitable for anything. Yeah, at um, So let's see, we're looking at um, somewhere, the, an hourly rate somewhere between our library assistant and library associate. So it looks like about $20 an hour. 
would be, I think, reasonable to, to use. And then, of course, um, you know, the benefits that we have. Um, two security guards with benefits, I estimate, would run um, about $83,000 additional in the budget for 2024. Um, that being the case, if you add up the other elements and this element, you're looking at an 8.95% tax increase. I'm not saying here, I'm, I'm making a presentation and it's something that we have discussed as a staff. Um, I'm not saying that having security guards solves all your problems. Um, our staff has reacted very well to many of these situations and have been able to diffuse a number of these situations. And I worry that sometimes security guards won't be able to diffuse these situations and sometimes make them worse. Um, but that's just a concern of mine um, going forward. That, that's the advantage of hiring our own. You know, hire our own. We could train them to do yeah. as we would, as opposed to hiring a rental right person that comes in and does whatever standard security is. You know. mm -hmm. No, I think it that gives you uh, gives you better the opportunity quality, yeah. to. Plus, if they're here all the time, then they get to know it's yeah, the right. people. Yeah, who right. are protecting. Yeah, and the people oh, who are and the people who are coming on a regular basis. Yeah. I have two questions. One, how much do you figure you're going to spend per year <clears throat> beyond salary in terms of the administrative costs and training? Because there are some costs there administratively, so for registration and, and the training and that. The other, yeah, there would be. I mean, they're kind of hidden costs, but yeah, they're they're not hidden. You can actually dig them out, like because security guards, I believe, are well. Yeah, guards. I mean, I'm just saying that for our purposes, it doesn't there, necessarily just the salary, salary and benefits, and to the tax levy. So, <laughs> but the other question I'm going to ask, thinking out loud, don't know the answer. Would University Heights be amenable in contracting to put us under their umbrella. The one now? University Heights, which is Russell Sage, using their security contracted over, over here too. I don't know. I haven't, you know, I, I since I, you've got a fairly good sized force. <laughs> Well established, well supervised, bordering us on two sides. Why, why is it worth asking the question? Why would they do that? I mean, it's worth, worth, right, it's worth asking the question. This is that. Because they, they might look at and say, okay, we can afford to do that. It, it, but this is what it would cost you, and it might be. Yeah. Right. They would okay. charge us. I mean, yeah, they would charge us. It would it might be doable. Up to it. And it would it would also, in that case, cut some of our administrative costs mm -hmm. and in and the mind space that someone in our organization has to would not have to spend on the security guard piece. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to having our own security, but given we have there's a, a potential opportunity right here. We want to ask the question. Yeah, I, 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 as I say, I don't, uh, our experience in the past with <laughs> borrowing security guards hasn't been good. Um, that's why I'm suggesting that you would probably have to hire security guards in this particular case. Um, but I have no idea. I haven't talked to Sage at all. Um, about their security situation. I know they have some good guards over there. They do. They're um, very well structured. Yeah, I, I, I admire their, their 
Okay. And that, that's why I say we ought to ask. <laughs> I didn't realize they would be at all interested in sharing yes. that sort of We don't know what we ask. Why not? They don't seem to be interested in other yeah. sharing events. So. Yeah, if, <laughs> and, if they, and if they say no, that provides further justification. Yep. Or if they say, this is what it's going to cost you, and we look at it and say, that's too rich for our blood, that provides justification for where we're going. And, and, and Karen just said quietly something else, too, that we could find someone over there who might... Maybe they have part-time people or yeah. something like that. Well, if, you're, if you find somebody over there, it's probably going to cost you about what this is going to cost yeah. you. Right. But right. I'm just saying that you're going to have <laughs> to look for somebody anyways. Right. So you might have someone who's already gone through a certain amount of training and understanding of and the, the people downtown. Too. Right. And has the experience as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not opposed to the notion of hiring our own. Uh, I, I just think... We ought to ask the question across the street first. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm, I'm, not, not uh, I'm, I'm saying I think this takes a lot of thought because I'm not happy about spending eighty three thousand dollars here. Yeah. On yeah. that, I like to spend eighty three thousand dollars on books and other staff. I mean, yeah. it's not something I really want to do. Understood. <laughs> also, an eight eight point nine percent increase after a sixteen percent yeah. increase. That's a that's a yeah. kind of big ask. I don't know whether. Well, it's something to think about. Right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Something. Um. I do. I want to make you aware, though, that this is a serious situation. We're in a serious situation. Um. And we're working on ways to improve that. We're you know. I don't have all the ideas at this moment. <laughs> What's the relation? There is a suggestion too that uh, you know a security guard here and a good security guard with uniforms is going to be a deterrent. Well, perhaps eighty-three thousand dollars is a lot to spend on that. But I think Marie has a question. Uh, I was wondering what the relationship with the Troy police is. The what? Relationship. relationship with the Troy police. It's good. It's fine. I mean, um, you know, they show up pretty quickly when it's really bad. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of that as a as a possible partnering, Marie, as a possible partnering. Or it, it, it's sometimes difficult. They sometimes have different points of view than we do. Uh, we had a recent incident, which I wanted them to follow up on. I'm not sure they did, um, but. I noticed the uh, CVS in downtown has, has got a security guard now. Yeah. yeah. They changed their whole layout and everything's crazy there. Well, retail is just leaving cities like in droves. Because of you know shoplifting. Okay. Uh, I just wondered whether they they had any advice to offer us. Did they have any advice? Yeah, they said get cameras. We did that. <laughs> yeah, cameras. That was some recent advice, and we've used them quite extensively, actually, and. Um, Matter of fact, the last couple of incidents, we um, gave them all the footage that we had. So that's helpful. The cameras are for after the fact, as opposed to diffusing facts or events from happening. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think they would probably recommend a security guard too, but. Um, any other questions, comments? Paul, do you have anything else? Um, yeah, you know, I I had yes, uh, uh, regarding the estimates on the utilities. I had looked at um, our figures for this year compared to last year, and uh, last year we had about used about fifty percent of of the money by in the first four months. And if we were to do that in this year, 
um, our costs I would expect would be 60,000, approximately 60, 000, over $60,000 for utilities. So the 11,000 you have based on next year might not be adequate. Well, I didn't really expect it to be a final decision here, um, but I did compare the end of April with the end of April this year. And it looks like we're about 35% ahead of what we were in April 30th last year. Um, I, and I kind of did the same thing in my projection as to how much utilities would cost us would be about 60,000, which is about 20,000 more than, than we budgeted. Anyway, I like to said, I don't think we got a final figure yet, but um, again, I got to talk to National Grid and see what the heck they're doing. <laughs> now, in light of what we talked about in the finance committee and the IT costs, should we be looking at increasing those as well? Because we're so close to our annual amount already, or do you think that's a one off because of something that happened this year? Oh, no, maybe. <laughs> Just bring it up. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's a valid. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Uh, again, this is early on. We're just sort of uh, beginning the process here of uh, the 2024 budget. One of the things that the <laughs> IT stuff does help bring people in the door people who might not otherwise come down town even or come to the library will come for access to some of the IT that they don't have at home now that people live with more with smartphones or tablets. Any other um, comments, questions? Anything else you wanted to add? The one is off the record. <laughs> <laughs> We're being recorded, so it's not I'm, exactly I'm, off I'm the not, record. I'm not sure what an art gallery is. Did you is want it, me to it, we can discuss that? Like, selling art? Did, did you want me to stop the recording or pause it or? Pause it. Okay. Okay, I'll pause it. All right. Okay. Um, old new business. Yes. What would it take this year or in, or in next year's budget to bring us into back into the Chamber of Commerce? To, to what? Have us join the Chamber of Commerce. Oh. Few hundred bucks <laughs> for, um, for what purpose? No, I don't have the bill. What's the bill usually, Joy? Do you remember? Off the top of my head, I don't, but I can no, look. I don't either. For, for what purpose, though? The purpose would be it, it provides some opportunities for training, it provides some opportunities for group purchasing on things like utilities as well as it increases our visibility and gets us closer to people who might be able to donate to us. Well, we were members for about 20 years and not much of that happened. Um, I'm, it, 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 it requires a uh, active right. process to, to take advantage of those things and it doesn't happen passively. So if there's not bandwidth to do active participation, there may not be much value to it. Well, plus we've, we've examined, we did examine when we were members, their different plans. They had a health plan. They had, I don't know if they have a utility plan they anymore. They do have a utility plan. But none of them were cheaper than what we were paying. Um, so there wasn't any real savings there. 
But it would cost us about seven. Be that as it may, we can certainly join again if we want to pay their bill. <laughs> I guess we'd have to find out what currently it is. I have sat with their salesperson last week. You what? I sat with Mike Nagel, their sales guy, last week, and we'd be just over 700 because it's based on your employee headcount, um, your full time equivalents. Well, we have a few more people now. <laughs> you want to go to events and pay for that as well. So it's yeah, and mentor. Yeah, it might save us money. It might also, again, get us. You know, we talk about tapping into financial resources in the community. How do we get near to those people, organizations that have those resources? Well, I think there's a lot of organizations that don't have membership fees that we can get close to. <laughs> um, it's not. It's the only option, I think. It probably could be a campaign plan to the goals of what we were trying to do. And that might help to inform who we want to get close to. And that could be a good strategy to do once we know what we're trying to fundraise for. I just want to interject the last um, we joined was 2019, and the cost was $678.95. Thank you, Joy. You're welcome. And we can bring this up in two months. Do you have anything else that you can tell us specifically? That would be good if you've talked to their salespeople. Okay. And see what we, you know, what other alternatives if people say that there are others. Other alternative organizations, if we can figure out what those might be, and whether or not that's more of a benefit. So, two months? Yeah. Okay. Now, next question. Some organizations will make a donation if you send them a letter. Does each letter have to be voted on by the board, or how would we approach that? Or is that something that's being done by the friends now? Yeah, isn't that what the friends yeah. are doing? The friends are writing the letters down, not, not the letter. Mm -hmm. That was our annual letter. Are there particular organizations you're thinking of? Yes. Okay. But is, are there particular campaigns you're going to ask for money for, or is it just for money for the general fund? How do we want, how are we, what's it being targeted for now? If, I don't think there's a plan right now. Okay. That's... Well, like the annual pool always went to the annual, I mean, to operational budget. Right. Whether or not that's how the friends exactly would look, yes, they want to do more service orientation than facility, but. So refer that to the friends? Okay. okay. So is there a reason we can't do it through our own organization, or is it because we're not a 501c3? It I guess it would depend on because we're publicly funded. I think there's several answers to that. Uh, one, I think, would depend on um, what the donation was in for. Uh, then we have the MOU with the friends now. Right, right. Um, although there is a piece that say we are still we can the library itself can still accept donations mm -hmm. so we still have the right to collect donations but we're trying to give them that kind of fundraising mm -hmm. um opportunity but then I, I thought that we had decided to shift the fundraising to the friends because there was a question about whether we as the library could fundraise since we receive public funds that's what i was wondering yeah well that little aspect was still under discussion. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be some question about whether that is accurate or not. Um, mm -hmm. But it was more we just primarily, primarily too, which was there's no question about is that we asked for a very large increase in our taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was 
I will use the word unseemly to ask for donations right after. But whether the controller does not, there are two variations on this theme of whether or not the controller has ever made a, an opinion on um, whether or not we could collect donations or not, um, or ask for money like that. Some say yes, and some say no. So um, we left that out, but we as a library can still accept donations. But we have given the re more of that responsibility to the friends, at least until December 31st. 2023. We'll see how it works. And are the donations to the library itself tax deductible? As far as I, I've always known that they have been. Yeah. Um, yeah. The friends have their own 501 Yeah, they are their own five. But even well, I'm wondering about the li library. She's asking uh, at the library if someone gives a donation. The library, yes, is specifically mentioned in the tax code yep. as being. Um, Yeah, whatever. Tax deductible. <laughs> um, but yeah, tax deductible. With the changes though in the tax structure, we've noticed that um, you know people are not as concerned about that as they used to be because it doesn't count as much. You have to donate one hell of a lot of money for it to pay on your taxes. Um, so anyway. That change came about a couple of years ago, and I think it's affected a lot of um, um, nonprofits who, you know, depend on donations. Any other old new business? Old business, new business? In person or virtual? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, we can go quickly through community feedback. Um, I heard people have completed volunteer forms and haven't heard anything in response. Okay. Um, I heard from that same person, so. But that's going to be taken care of, I think, internally here. Um, anything else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, public comments? I'd like to add anything if I could. Well, please. Sure. So I want to thank Paul for presenting the safety concerns so thoroughly um, on behalf of the staff. Um, I do have a few things specifically. Our partnership with the police has really improved this year. We started at the beginning of the year with inviting them to our in-service. We know several of the officers by name and the community um, uh, mental health response unit and several others that we've come to know through interactions and outreach events as well. So um, I think that they're more aware of what we experience and take our calls more seriously now and have better follow through as a result. Though um, I do think they are plagued as well by understaffing and sometimes the response to calls such as the large incident where it was, up, it, it was significantly delayed um, depends on how many calls the police are actually taking at that time. Um, as far as security, I'm gonna change the terminology from security to safety, because I think it presents a different point of view. Um, I happen to personally agree with Paul that I'm not entirely sure security guards are the answer. I would much more prefer to have more staff that are paid adequately that can be trained properly. If you contract with outside sources yes even if they are properly trained for their um, organization they're not going to be dedicated to the library and invested the same way that the other employees are they're not going to know the ins and outs of not only the building but patrons uh, and staff and how the staff work even if you train those people uh, they switch out and then somebody comes in tomorrow and you spent a whole month training somebody and now they're not there anymore and you have to start over again. 
Um, I also would prefer to see um, investment in better security cameras, including external views of exits and some of our deficits internally, like the Ferry Street entrance and uh, near our restrooms. Uh, again, I'm speaking in generalities. Uh, I don't necessarily speak for the entire staff. And of course, our safety committee will make um, formal recommendations to Paul. But uh, in internal conversations and checking in with everybody else, having an effective team that is trained appropriately and everybody understands their roles, it contributes to a more effective response to any incident, whether it's a small response of somebody perhaps having their bag stolen or a phone stolen to the violent incursions that we've had in recent times. Uh, so we do need to address the concerns, but I don't know necessarily what that means. And I just wanted to add that portion for you to consider as well. But I could I just piggyback on what Virginia said, <clears throat> and I agree with her. Um, the other point um, I think that she was making was um, the fact that um, so out, an outside security guard isn't going to know the policies that we have. And that's really important um, that they know um, what the rules are because they can't enforce them if they're if they're not aware of them. And procedures. It's and important procedures. that everybody's following the same procedures to not conflict and give um, combating approaches to a, a situation. I, um, I think what you, guys... you might want to point out is that um, somebody hired as a security guard wouldn't be familiar with the culture <clears throat> in the library. The rules we can train you on, the culture is much more difficult. Thank um, you. And, um, you know, when you advertise for a security guard, if you say a security guard, that's what the suggestion of safety is, is always good. <laughs> um, but if you're advertising for a security guard, I mean, you got to sort through the people with black belts and ex-Marines and, you know, that sort of thing, which you don't want. Right. We want peacekeepers. Right. <laughs> and that's the culture of the library, basically, uh, which may be different than other places. <laughs> so, Virginia, are you saying that you feel the same way, like you don't? not only just not hiring from an outside service, but hiring one that's actually an employee of the library? You feel the same way about that? I feel like if it's decided that we need to have safety officers and we are going to appropriately fund that, and I, I mean appropriately, you can't just hire a part-time person who's going to be here at random hours. At Paul's suggestion of two full-time people that are employees that we can invest in and get the return with um longevity and training them then i would i would understand and be able to back that but if it's not fully supported um and we rely on external resources to provide those people i don't think that's a good idea in any way okay thanks were you saying that you'd prefer to see um, additional staff hired instead of safety officers? Um, this may be an unpopular opinion in general, but yes, I actually would prefer to have more adequate staffing levels in all departments that we have permanent employees that are trained and fully, you know, there, there's, we can't pay attention to what's going on because we're so busy. Um, so does that mean that you have a safety officer who's dedicated to making sure those things happen and it makes a difference? I honestly don't know the right answer. Um, but my preference is always going to be adequately staffing departments that already exist. Yeah, the primary uh, concern of the security guard would be vigilant. Um, making sure they know what's going on all the time and looking for um, things that are unusual or things that look like possible problems developing. 
Well, that doesn't necessarily isn't a security guard. It can be an employee who has a double role um, and who is aware of the environment all the time that they're on duty. As Virginia pointed out, if you're working on the desk, you're checking out books, you're waiting on people in the same way with reference, you're answering questions, you're busy with that sort of thing. Um, I believe, and I have to, I haven't talked to her, Andrea, at Albany, but I believe that they have experimented with that particular idea. Um, and again, it's not necessarily a security guard per se, the person who keeps their eye out and, you know, to what's happening in the environment. But if, right. that, person is, if that person is also doing other things, then they're distracted from, they may be distracted from something that may be happening or brewing. You know I, I mean? think, um, I'm yeah. sorry, Jerry, but I think yeah. Paul is actually indicating, you know, at reference, they do two hour desk shifts. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have, a station that needs to monitored, monitored and then staffed with the regular staff, like cross training. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it still has to be properly supported with adequate staffing levels. And, it, you know, again, I don't have the right answer. And I think our safety committee will have a lot of great recommendations to put forward. Um, and ultimately, it's not our decision to make. Um, there are a lot of different point of views, including um, advocating towards a safety officer because somebody in a uniform can be a turn for typical behavior. Um, people will be less comfortable with petty theft or arguing in the library if they, you know, that that ingrown that ingrained like resistance to authority or fear of authority um, is there, but they're still just a person. Um, and that person isn't going to stop the drug overdose reaction in the lobby. They're not going to prevent somebody from coming in the side door and collapsing on the stairs. So the security officer is not a cure-all for all of the problems, um, lack of visibility with cameras, insufficient staffing in all departments. Um, you know, the building itself presents many obstacles. Um, so I think, you know, I just want to, I guess the point is to show different points of view that there's not just, okay, well, if we get security officers, all the problems are fixed. And what is the timeline for the safety committee to meet? Um, Paul has to set that uh, meeting. It was just suggested, um, recently, um, and to gather interest, uh, Paul is right. It's pretty much almost the entire staff is interested in serving on it in some way at this point. Um, so I'm I'm assuming Paul would set a meeting in the next week or two, and then obviously the first meeting isn't going to be sufficient. He would have right. to filter out those um, suggestions. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, as far as like looking at the budget for next year. Mm -hmm. I Better. understand. Yeah. I'll defer to Paul to that. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's all I have to say today. I just wanted to make sure that you understood from the staff perspective that there's many different approaches to that. Um, ultimately, it being your decision, um, the security guard, even two full-time employees are not going to solve all of our problems. Brianna? Um, not to further complicate the conversation, but to add another possible perspective to consider. Um, there is a growing movement in the social work yeah. profession to have social workers on staff at libraries in part to navigate a lot of the situations that you're describing here, but then also to be sort of like. We, we did discuss that uh, we've had some experience. We had social workers that are in service, um, it's just a different perspective. Um, and we don't um, really want to become a social service agency. Of course. Um, but you are. 
Well, yeah, <laughs> we are, but not in the same sense. Um, and, um, you know, the social workers that we have had experience with, uh, as I say, they have a really different different perspective. Um, um, some of our incidents have been really serious. Well, well, immediate and serious. Mm -hmm. Any sort of um, violence, but if you're talking about like drug I mean, concerns or they're not really prepared to deal with that level of, mm -hmm. you know, um, activity. Yeah, I can that's, say. That's, I mean, that's can you hear me? What we've been discussing at any rate at can this you, point. Yes, the post um, who who said? Can you hear me? I don't know who said that, but it was. Oh, I, that was me. That was Lori. Okay. Sorry. I, I did not think my microphone was working. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we did do a little bit of research on social workers in libraries. Two of the local libraries have had social workers um, and they have since discontinued both of those programs. And I think a lot of that is the philosophy that Paul is talking about um the social worker tends to approach the patient um holistically whereas our perspective is much more about approaching the library holistically um and so i think that those two divergent thought processes are not they don't really work well in tandem and it tends to be much better for us to properly train our staff in de-escalation techniques um, and awareness uh, to what's going on around them, not just to protect single patrons, but to protect all the patrons and all the staff that are present. Um, and I think that's where that divergence comes in. You know, I, was, I was going to suggest um, having conflict resolution training for the staff. So as you said, how to de-escalate situations and um, uh, yes, diffuse. Uh, and that is training we do. Mm -hmm. Who does yeah, it? it is. Uh, it's currently training that we do internally, um, but uh, we would be happy to also find external mentors uh, for yeah. such subjects. Well, you might get the you know the the mediation program to come in and do that. Um, Paul has been trained as a mediator a long time ago. What's that? <laughs> I was talking about the mediation program to come in and, and do a training for you, possibly. And they would probably do it without, <clears throat> without a charge. Yeah, there's there's some opportunities available out there. We're um, going to look at some um, opportunities that a um, couple of us libraries can share perhaps, and uh, so we're in the process. <laughs> yeah, I think the other thing to, to just point out is that our, our staff are well-trained, um, mm -hmm. internal training or not. We have a collective experience among us, um, mm -hmm. different certifications among us that mm -hmm. bring all of that to the table. Uh, and we are ever growing with our policies and procedures. So we take feedback from everybody as we go and we make adjustments when we need to. Um, I don't find fault in staff training in any of the incidents and the- No, oh, no. Yeah. Um, I, you know, obviously we wanna keep our skills sharp and we wanna expand when we can as situations grow. But um, I think that's part of my objection to external people coming in with um, pseudo authority is because they would disrupt that balance of training amongst the staff. I agree. I agree. Well said. Thank you. Um, any other comments, public comments? Okay. That case, we pretty much reached the end. Um, by the way, our director of adult services came in and I'm going to pass this around if people want to check out the June schedule. So this is just paperwork. Um, I don't know if anyone else is going to the 
are interested in going to the um, Upper Hudson annual celebration when needed an invitation in paper. Don't they send them? I don't know if everyone received one in the mail or not. So you're welcome. I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. Not one? No. She will. When, when is it in the mail? Say what? When and where is it? Um, it's going to be at Rev Hall. No work team. When is it? <laughs> when is it? Oh. That gives you oh, the date, time. Yeah, I won't be here. Here, here's an invite. I'm waiting for my reservation in the mail. Can't yeah. tell you. Maybe it came in the. Um, you probably got it in the in the van delivery. <laughs> yeah, right. They were doing right. it. Who knows where it is? Uh, <laughs> Paul, it's hanging up near the mailboxes. <laughs> he wants his. <laughs> right. so, I'm like, oh, I was going to be here, but I'm not. I just want to make sure everyone can head that. We needed it headed. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um. So, date and time of our next meeting, June 13th, 5 o'clock for finance, 5.30. I will not be here. I'll be in New York. Good to know. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and I take it no virtual. Right. I got it. Just want to make sure. Uh, June 13th, 5 for finance, 5.30 for regular. And then, um, unless there's anything else hanging. All right. Um, I'd like to call for an adjournment. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody. Now, for those who can may 